Hello everybody, Thomas here and welcome back to SFF 180. It is Monday the 2nd of May and here I am with another mailbag. How you guys been doing? I've been doing really, really well. Spent most of last week out of town. I visited my mom for the first time in a while. It was my birthday last Wednesday and so that was kind of a nice time to get up there, get away from Austin, sort of, you know, relax my head for a few days. Uh, and then, of course, we had massive torrential thunderstorms the whole time, but it was still a great trip, and now I'm back, back to work as it is. I have a much more modest haul this week, only four packages compared to last week's mega 19 title blowout, uh, which was awesome, but it's nice to have a, a little bit more uh, light, uh, a little bit lighter. Uh, in the stack this week. So, although I think a couple of these have uh, more than one book in them. So, I guess without further ado, uh, we'll get right to the books. I'm just gonna add that I am super crazy excited because not this week, but next week, uh, the BEA, Book Expo America, and Nebula Weekend are happening simultaneously in Chicago. Super pumped for that. Gonna be going there, doing the vlogging thing for you guys like I did last time. It's gonna be so awesome. Uh, but uh, before then, still got books to unwrap, so let's get to it. Okay, so judging by the address on this one, this is gonna be a couple of items from the lovely folks at Tour Books. And these are a couple of uh, items I've been looking forward to, but this one I think is already out. Let me look at... Yeah, this came out April the 12th. Come on, Tor, what's up? Well, it's here now. Uh, the author is Fred Chappell. It's called A Shadow All of Light. As you see, it is an epic fantasy looking epic fantasy. Uh, a fellow with a really cool curved blade there on the cover, about to flay someone alive. It says, uh, this book follows the exploits of Falco. A young man from the country who arrives in the port city of Tardoko with the ambition of becoming an apprentice to a master shadow thief, Maestro Astolfo, whose mysterious powers of observation would rival those of Sherlock Holmes. Sees Falco's potential, this guy, uh, and puts him through a grueling series of physical lessons and intellectual tests. Falco's adventures coalesce into one overarching story of con men, monsters, ingenious detection, cats, and pirates. Well, there you go, everything possible. A wry humor leavens this fantastical concoction, and the style is as rich and textured as one would hope for from Chapel, a distinguished poet as well as a World Fantasy Award winning author. Okay, let's see. Uh, what did he win? Okay, he's written for, I guess he's got a story in years, Best Fantasy 8, and uh, let me see if there's any, okay. Da, 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 da. Well, he's won a ton of awards. He's won two World Fantasy Awards. Oh, he's 1960... Uh, all right, well, this guy's been writing for some time. His 1968 novel, Dagon, was named the best foreign book of the year by the uh, Académie Française. Okay. Well, so he's a veteran, a veteran writer, back in the saddle with a new novel, A Shadow, All of Light. And the other one here we have is Company Town, a new book by Madeline Ashby. This was a book on my most anticipated of 2016 list. Uh, and somehow, for some reason, this one doesn't have a cell sheet tucked into it, which is unusual. Uh, so I will just uh, read from the flappy thing here. It says, One woman must choose between protecting the people of a town that can't be saved or saving herself. New Arcadia is a city-sized oil rig off the coast of the Canadian Maritimes, now owned by one very powerful and secretive family-run corporation, Lynch Limited. H. Uh, Hua, that's, that's about to like spell it out, Hua, is one of the few people in her community, which constitutes the whole rig, to forego bio bioengineered enhancements. As such, she's the last truly organic person left on the rig, making her doubly an outsider as well as a neglected daughter and bodyguard extraordinaire. Still, her expertise in the arts of self-defense and her record as a fighter mean that her services are in high demand. Uh, when the youngest Lynch needs training and protection, the family patriarch turns to Hua, but can she protect against increasingly intense death threats seemingly coming from another timeline? Okay, then. It says it's a future noir mystery for fans of Margaret Atwood, David Lynch, and Corey Doctor. It's not a very big book, so uh, should be able to get this one through uh, pretty quickly. But Company Town uh, from Madeline Ashby, I guess, is out this month from Tor. And here we have another white package that also usually indicates a tour title, but not always. Although in this case, yes, uh, it was a tour title, and it is Two Like the Lightning by Ada Palmer. Another one I've been looking forward to. Somehow this man, I, ma I missed managing to get this on my most anticipated list, but the more I've been reading, 
some of the advanced buzz about it. I am very, very excited to get started on it. It says uh, that it is the first novel in a new political science fiction series. Uh, Palmer's unique vision mixes Enlightenment-era philosophy with traditional science fiction speculation to bring to life the year 2454, not a perfect future, but a utopian one, described by a narrator writing in an antiquated form to catalog the birth of a revolution. Hmm. The result is The Iliad meets I, Claudius, mixed with the enthusiasm of The Star's My Destination and Gene Wolfe-style world-building. Yeah. Uh, wow. All right. <laughs> that is a that is a a high standard uh, to aspire towards. So let's see. Mycroft Canner is a convict for his crimes. He is required, as is the custom of the twenty fifth century, to wander the world, being as useful as he can to all he meets. Carlisle Foster is a sensayer, a spiritual counselor, and a world that has outlawed the public practice of religion, but which also knows that the inner lives of humans cannot be wished away. The world into which Mycroft and Carlyle have been born is as strange to our 21st century eyes as ours would be to a native of the 1500s. Right. It is a hard-won utopia built on the technologically gen on technologically generated abundance, and also on complex and mandatory systems of labeling all public writing and speech. Hmm. What seem to us normal gender distinctions are now distinctly taboo in most social situations, and most of the world's population is affiliated with globe-girdling clans of the like-minded, whose endless economic and cultural competition is carefully managed by central planners of inestimable subtlety. Wow. To us it seems like a mad combination of heaven and hell, to them it seems like normal life. And in this world, Mycroft and Carlyle have stumbled on the wild card that may destabilize the system. The boy, Bridger, who can effortlessly make his wishes come true, who can, it would seem, bring inanimate objects to life. Huh. And it says, perfect for fans of Joe Walton, Robert Charles Wilson, and Kim Stanley Robinson. Hmm, a refreshing change of pace from the current trend of gritty dystopian novels. Much like Homer telling of heroic deeds in Wine Dark Seas, Mycroft Canner's narration will draw you into the world of Terra Ignota, a world simmering with gender politics, and religious fervor just beneath the surface on the brink of revolutionary change. Well, you know what? This sounds like the kind of, um, you know, far-reaching, ambitious, highbrow spec fic that uh, has maybe been missing uh, in science fiction too much of late. So I'm, uh, <laughs> I welcome this. What do you think, folks? Let me know in the comments. And I forgot to mention that comes out May the 10th. Okay, here we have something from, ooh, the Hatchet Group. What could it be? Oh wow, this is, well no wonder, this is the UK edition. Wild, because this doesn't usually happen in the US where you get a hardcover with no dust jacket. Instead the art is printed right on. Um, I, this is uh, coming out in the States June the 7th, but again they've sent me the UK edition, I guess for uh, reading uh, purposes. Uh, it's Saint's Blood by Sebastien de Castel. It is the third installment of his Great Coats series following uh, Knight's uh, Trader's Blade and Knight's Shadow. Um, very much beloved series, uh, critically, so far I'm led to understand. Uh, but let's see, I don't really want to give away too much. Ah, I can read some of this uh, blurb here. It says, Trader's Blade, um, talking about an earlier book, is a swashbuckling romp packed with charisma, camaraderie, quick wit, and even quicker swordplay. That said, it's far from candy-coated and it packs some serious substance. Darkness is served up deliciously in Trader's Blade. Deliciously? Deliciously. I can say that word. Hey. Uh, only de Castell uses it as the sauce, not the soup. Oh, that's very clever. Uh, all right. Well, then, um, whole trilogy is out now, and uh, so I can maybe now line these up, put these in the queue, and do the back-to-back -back thing. But Saint's Blood, coming out the 7th of June, from Joe Fletcher Books, looks like. Okay, guys, last one, and this is from Random Penguin. <coughs> <coughs> Shut up, this isn't weird at all. Anyway, this is the final finished copy, as you see, of Children of Earth and Sky, uh, the new book by the great Guy Gavriel Kay. I'm reading this this week. Sorry, BookTube SFF Award titles that I have yet to get to. You're going to have to be bumped a little bit. Uh, but yeah, look for my review of this ASAP, because this comes out next Tuesday the 10th, and so I need to have my review up by that time. Uh, so, a year with a new Guy Gavriel Kay novel is gonna be a good year. That's just how it goes. Now, for those of you who don't remember, because, you know, I, I already got this in art form, but uh, just a quick pre here of the plot. It's uh, set in a world inspired by the conflicts and dramas of Renaissance Europe, 
Against this tumultuous backdrop, the lives of men and women unfold on the borderlands. It says, from the small coastal town of Senjan, notorious for its pirates, a young woman sets out to find vengeance for her lost family. That same spring, from the wealthy city-state of Ceresa, famous for its canals and lagoon, come two very different people, a young artist traveling to the dangerous east to paint the Grand Caliph at his request and possibly to do more, and a fiercely intelligent, angry woman posing as a doctor's wife but sent by Ceresa as a spy. The trading ship that carries them is commanded by the accomplished younger son of a merchant family, ambivalent about the life he's been born to live. And farther, farther east, a boy trains to become a soldier in the elite infantry of the Caliph to win glory in the war everyone knows is coming. As these lives entwine, their fates and those of many others will hang in the balance when the Caliph sends out his massive army to take the great fortress that is the gateway to the Western world. Children of Earth and Sky, May the 10th. Okay, everyone, that is it. That is this week's mailbag. And if there was anything in it less than awesomely exciting, I, I didn't see it. What do you think? Hell of a week. Let me know. Light up those comments. Tell me which of these books looks most interesting and exciting to you, which you want to see me prioritize in the review queue. Otherwise, please like the video if you liked it. Share far and wide with your SFF reading friends. And above all, slam that subscribe button if you have not done so. That's how we grow as a channel here. And you can be part of the SFF 180 family. And until I see all you awesome folks next time, happy reading.